My name is uh, Mazir Mokhtar. I am currently the Deputy Head for Research, United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network, Asia Headquarters, Kuala Lumpur Office, hosted by Jeffrey Cha Foundation at Sunway University, Kuala Lumpur. Um, my background a little bit. Uh, I'm an emeritus professor. That means I have retired from government service. I served 37 years at the University of Kebangsaan Malaysia. Uh, and uh, some of the posts I held over in UKM uh, was as uh, Director of Lestari, Institute for Environment and Development for 14 years and had a chance to uh, lead UKM in terms of research as a Deputy Vice-Chancellor for Research 2014 to 2017. And within the country during those times, sometimes I was uh, selected by the government to lead certain uh, committees, uh, including to become the Chairman of Environment Quality Council of Malaysia 2015 until 2018. And I was also fortunate enough to be selected by Government of Malaysia to lead a special committee to look at the LINAS operation on rare earth elements uh, processing. And also Deputy uh, Chairman of Committee to look at uh, standard operating procedure for bauxite mining and at the international level I'm one of the professors uh, that link up with United Nations University to come up with a UN CISA program a special program targeted at working executive uh, UN CISA special program to come up with uh, building resilience towards uh, climate and ecosystems change so that was a very good program and in Malaysia as well uh, under uh, my involvement with Lestari we got it hooked up into the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Malaysia chapter which was launched by the Minister for Education including Higher Education in 2012 and we were the one among the founding members of the SDSN Malaysian Leadership Council so about a year ago, uh, United Nations SDSN set up the Kuala Lumpur office in charge of Asia. It was launched in November, 17 November 2022. Uh, I was invited to join on the 1st of June 2022 to look at the ecological systems program for Asia. So I'm looking at Southeast Asia first. And within that Southeast Asia, there are 10 countries. I'm looking at some existing program, one of which is Heart of Borneo, which was established in 2007 between Brunei Darussalam, Indonesia and Malaysia. And this program uh, had moved steadily after about 10 years or so. Uh, the government of Malaysia became the coordinator, taking over from WWF. And under the leadership of the Ministry in Charge of Environment, and natural resource and climate change of Malaysia, it's uh, broken up into Sabah Heart of Borneo and Sarawak Heart of Borneo. And for Sabah Heart of Borneo, it was under Sabah. It is under Sabah Forestry Department, and under Sarawak Heart of Borneo, it's Sarawak uh, Heart of Borneo, Sarawak Forestry Department. But glad to say, uh, Sabah Forestry Department uh, had moved very well. Every two three years they will establish or launch a SPA, Strategic Plan of Action, Sabah Hadobonio. And the, the latest was launched uh, 2nd December 2002, the third Strategic Plan of Action. And that has been my interest and SDSN interest to build up what we call the Science Panel for Southeast Asia. But because Southeast Asia is big, maybe we will launch Science Panel of Borneo and Sabah Forestry Department had formed an MOU with uh, SDSN, Asia Headquarters. So we look forward to working closely on the Sabah Heart of Borneo, of which Danum Valley plays an important role. A little bit long my background because I'm coming from the perspective of Borneo ecosystems. Borneo ecosystems are very important to the whole world. As I've related earlier in some of the earlier session, the whole world, especially under SDSN, we're looking at the important ecosystems of the world. Perhaps the most important now is Amazon, 
whereby in the year 2021 at the COP26 meeting in Glasgow, the science panel of Amazon launched a special book, Report of the Amazon. They brought in 240 scientists coming from eight countries. And this had inspired the formation of science panel for Congo River Basin, perhaps the second most important ecosystems of the world. So science panel of Congo River Basin is moving. And now with SDSN in Asia, we would like to form the science panel for Southeast Asia for BioD protection. And as I mentioned, we shall move first with, inshallah, science panel for Borneo. And this is where ecosystems in Borneo is very important, Kalimantan, Sabah, Sarawak and Brunei. And in Sabah, there are important forest complexes, which are very important. We know of Danum Valley, Malayo Basin and Imbak. But Danum Valley, congratulations. You are celebrating your 40 years now, today. And in this workshop, we are gathering about 100 very selected people. But what is very inspiring are, 70% I would say, are coming from the age group of 30 years and below, which, which are actually we are looking into the future. And sustainable development is about the future and the next generation because the concept is borrowing the earth or planet earth from the future generation. So for us, the current generation, we would like to share our knowledge and experiences with the younger generation. In, for this case, R&D workshop, future direction for Danum Valley after 40 years, but looking for the next 40 years. So what's the importance and connectivity to SDG, Sustainable Development Goals? It just happened that that is the main core business of our institution, Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which began in 2012 when Professor Jeffrey Sachs, based in Columbia University, was appointed by Secretary General of United Nations, uh, Ban Ki-moon, appointed Professor Jeffrey Sachs and his Professor of Economy, economics of the world. So sustainable development is about economics, environment and social and governance. But of course, economics is very important to almost all of us. But in a way, we must look at connectivity, nexus. So in this case, connectivity of economics, environment and social. No one is to be left behind. And SDGs is about 17 goals, 169 targets, I think about 242 indicator. Mm -hmm. But one of the relevant SDGs whereby Danum Valley Field Center becomes very important is SDG number 14 and SDG 15, life below water, life on land, climate action, SDG 13, I think all the SDGs are important, including poverty, eradication, zero hunger and all that. Because the next thing we look at is how part of the forest can bring benefit to the local community, including indigenous community. So, so easy to say, but quite challenging to find the solutions to problem. That's why we are very happy to be involved and invited to participate in this 40, 40th anniversary of DVFC, Danum Valley Field Center. Um, yeah, we have high hopes of the future. The thing is, we are now at the year 2023. SDG's ultimate goal is 2030. What is left is seven years, maybe less, six and a half years. And when we look at the midway because SDG was officially launched 2015 until 2030, 15 years, we are already at the halfway mark, 50% of the journey. And when SDSN monitor the performance of SDG achievements of countries in the world, we fail. In most of the, in fact, in all the SDG, we are still lagging below 50%. So that means all of us must work very hard to try and catch up and accelerate 
try to achieve the 17 SDGs in about six and a half, seven years time. And who are the most energetic and people that are going to bring us into the future? The younger generation, the youth. And we are going to share our experiences to bring up and train you in terms of capability and capacity to become future leaders, even as current leaders in your respective community, either at work or after office hour. So that is what some of the greatest challenge, but we are very happy to be involved. So at the end of the day, to make sustainable development goals happen on the ground, it shouldn't be only the agenda of Prime Minister and Minister at the federal level. It must happen at state, district, local authority level. So that I would imagine and SDSN would say those are the crucial critical points. And some of you here in this room will become the future district officer or the future local authority leaders or members of the local authority. And the one of the important SDG is 17, the 17th SDG, partnership, cooperation and collaboration are the two important things, whereby I always throw a challenge, wherever we are, we, we must try to help the nearest district officer, the nearest local authority leader. So congratulations to Dr. Y.D. Sinon and all the members of the management committee of Danum Valley Field Center. Congratulations on the brilliant 40 years whereby the VFC, as we have heard from some of the briefings by Professor Ghazali Ismail and other leaders just now, that the VFC had been voted as the best field center in the world, even beating the, the one in Costa Rica and elsewhere where it was modeled by, you had been there number one. But we believe DVFC can become a better and better model for things which are good going to happen at district and local authority level in Malaysia, hopefully also in Indonesia, in Brunei Darussalam, in Borneo. Borneo, inshallah, today is being seen perhaps as the third most important ecosystems in the world. Borneo is going to host the new capital city of Indonesia, Nusantara, which we believe is going to be maybe 10 times bigger than Putrajaya. Thereby, Sabah, Sarawak, Brunei must be and must get ready. And you all young people, these are the golden opportunity to really work with Nusantara, work in Sabah, work in Sarawak, in Borneo, balancing development and BioD, biodiversity protection. And that BioD for Danum Valley not only means that the forests and the trees on land, but also the system of the water, the river, the carbon, everything. And as we had done the sharing just now, the voluntary carbon market in which Sabah and Sarawak are taking the lead in Malaysia, congratulations, this will have an important impact and effect and implications upon what we are going to do in the next few years, particularly reaching 2030, but going another 20 years, it's 2050. And what did we promise to the world? Malaysia promised to be carbon neutral, 2050. Indonesia promised to be carbon neutral, 2060, because they have a challenging, bigger population, and they still need use the coal, Aram Batu. But maybe Sabah Sarawak with Malaysia, we can do it quicker by 2050. All these are beautiful words to be mentioned in documents, but not easy to do. But how to do it? We do it together. The current generation with the future generation, uh, people from various disciplines, people coming from various sectors, not only the government, not only academia, but community and also business and industry. Uh, yeah, we have done good for the past 40 years, but moving into the future, we discussed just now that 
very good uh, information and results coming from research and innovation from Danum. But we wonder whether it gets into the processes of decision making for the important people at the district, at the local authority, state level, federal government level. So what we are emphasizing just now was, okay, now Danum Valley Field Center, yeah, San Sabah, uh, CEMD, Conservation and Environmental Man Management Division, have done a good job. Of course, linking up with academia, not only academics from Malaysia, but also from overseas. But one thing we hope for the future, at the moment we estimate only about 30% are researchers, masters, PhD and professors from Malaysian universities. So we would like to step it up. So we must find a way, especially innovative and creative ways of combining academia and uh, government sector and business and industry for the co-financing and co-budgeting. Maybe we can have special program involvement of business and industry with academic under the purview of, of certain ministries and ministers. One. Number two, we really hope how can important results from research, especially from Danum Valley DVFC for 40 years, good uh, results and information, how do we get it into the agenda of meetings at, of district offices and local authority? Uh, that is a big challenge, not easy. That means, looking into the future, we are encouraging our government, particularly the state government, when they select district officer, when they select local authority leaders, please choose them carefully and persons that are of high capacity and capability and willingness to carry on their shoulder the 17 SDG and 169 targets. That means these are the important people for the state, for the district, for the local authority, because these are the people and leaders that will mingle with the people on the ground, communities on the ground, villagers, community leaders, village heads, imams, priests. There you go, you can see the picture, youth leader. So how do we encourage a good cooperation and collaboration? So we go to the multi-helix cooperation and cooperation. That means people from various disciplines, various sectors, must come and work together but you must have a good coordinator and leader and who is that coordinator and leader coming from a developing state and country we look to our district officer local authority leaders that's why important persons in the state would be state secretary and the chief minister if sdgs are being considered important by chief ministers and state secretary then for the future coming years State Secretary and Chief Minister will choose carefully District Officer and Local Authority because they are the leader that we will become the catalyst to bring business, academia, youth leader, religious leaders to help them work together so that no, no one is left behind to enjoy the benefit of economics, social inclus inclusivity and environmental sustainability. And this is where DVFC must continue to be the important place to bring people to carry on trying to balance biodiversity protection and development. We are not anti-development. We are for development, but development in a balanced way. Not easy. And the current challenge is how to balance development and biodiversity protection on land, in water, in the atmosphere with the challenge of global warming. And the challenge now is not only global warming, but already global boiling. The planet is getting too hot. And uh, weather and climate are getting haywire. More frequent floods, unexpected floods, bigger floods, and the drought also when it happened become more serious. How do we manage all this? How do we prepare? Mitigation, adaptation. So there you go. We are now living in a VUCA world, V-U-C-A. Very vulnerable, very uncertain, complex and ambiguous. And how do we have to manage all this? 
again we have to rely on you young people the youth the future leaders but we the more mature and the more senior this is where workshop like dvfc rnd future direction bringing us to share whatever knowledge and experiences we have with the young people together we develop better leaders more capable higher capacity leaders to move forward in a VUCA world and we really have high hope with the youth you are the future in your hands are also our future so that's it thank you very much for this opportunity